in these problems. Again, fairly basically, guys. We're just going to add our fractions. This one's not so bad, right? Again, if you're adding fractions, since they have the same denominator, you just add numerators, keep the denominator the same, right? 1 fourth plus 1 fourth is just 2 fourths. But remember, we can always simplify this, right? So you get 2 fourths, and you can simplify that to 1 half. So just because you apply the operation, look to always simplify, right? And that's kind of like our goal here. So in this, we could recognize to be 2 over the cosine of theta. But could I simplify that a little bit? Yeah, cosine's in the denominator. Typically, we don't want to write our answer as a fraction. We just want to write it as a single trigonometric function. So therefore, I could write this as 2 secant of theta. Yes? No? No? i show another way. Again, that's the same thing as 2 times 1 over cosine of theta. Right? Same another way of looking at it. All right, let's look about what about when you add fractions? They don't have the same denominator. Well, a fraction times an integer, change that to a fraction. Now we need to obtain common denominators. The common denominator of 4 and 1 is just 4. So you're going to multiply by a 4 over 4. So therefore, we have 1 fourth plus 4 fourths equals 5 fourths. So over here, I'm dividing by 1. Common denominator is now, over here, the common denominator was 4. Now the common denominator is sine. Do you guys see how it's the same thing? It's just confusing because it's functions instead of numbers, right? But as far as the mathematical operation, it's the same. So this becomes sine of theta times sine of theta. Again, we're only multiplying this fraction, so therefore we're left with 1 over sine of theta minus sine squared of theta over sine of theta. Now they have the same denominator. So we can write this as 1 minus sine squared of theta all over sine of theta. Well, remembering that Pythagorean identity, what do I recognize um, about the 1 minus sine of theta? What is that equal to? Cosine, cosine squared. I think we could simply, yes? Um, isn't there some figures that in this first problem, this is 1 fourth plus 4 over 4 is minus 1 fourth plus 1, not 4. Like, we didn't multiply 4 by 4. What's the most likely denominator of 4? Are you talking about this problem? Yeah. Oh, it's supposed to be a 16, isn't it? I was wondering. I'm like, I don't remember getting that. You're right. Thank you very much. That's 17 over 4. Let me give ourselves a little bit of room here. So can I simplify cosine squared of theta over sine of theta? Maybe. This is a little confusing, guys. Technically, if you do the operation, here's the operation. You're done. However, if we're, if we're practicing simplifying, we could change this to cosine squared. And technically, we could also change this to cosine of theta times the cosine of theta all over the sine of theta. And since everything's um, separated by multiplication, technically, we could group the sine with one of them. Don't do both of them, because sine is not divided into both of them. It only divides into like, one of them, technically. So therefore, we could actually rearrange this to cosine over sine is cotangent of theta times cosine of theta. So the reason why I'm bringing this up, guys, is again, I'll give you better directions on your problem so you'll know exactly what the answer needs to be. But the reason why I'm showing you these steps is because what if the problem was multiple choice? What if I said add? Or I'm saying, you know, I say, yeah, add or subtract these. And then what if that was the multiple choice answer? So you could do the operation, but you got to make sure you know how to continually simplify it to get an answer choice that would be available to you. On a free response, I'll tell you exactly how I want the, what I want the answer to be. All right. Um, all right, and that last example is three fourths plus four thirds. Well, in this case, guys, obviously we need to get common denominators, right? So I'm going to multiply by three over three and a four over four. So in this case, I will have a nine over twelve plus a sixteen over twelve, which is a beta cinco over twelve. So if I gave you something like this, 
sine of theta over cosine of theta plus cosine of theta over sine of theta. Finding the LCD is rather simple. Just like 3 and 4 there, I just multiplied them, right, to give me 12, give me the LCD. So in this case, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Right? So what's the LCD here? Well, the LCD here was 3 times 4. So the LCD here is going to be cosine of theta times sine of theta, right? I'm not trying to confuse you. When I multiply by a sine of theta on the left side and a cosine of theta on the right side, do you guys see how my now denominators are now exactly the same? Right? So now I'm left with a sine squared of theta plus a cosine squared of theta all over the same denominator, which is sine of theta, cosine of theta. I'm just combining them because I have a little bit of lack of space. And then does anybody recognize anything else special? Anything special? Maybe a Pythagorean theorem identity hanging out there? Sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to? One. And then, typically, we don't want to write this as a fraction. We prefer to write it as the reciprocal identities. So we could rewrite this as cosecant theta times secant of theta. See how much fun this is, guys? You guys don't seem to be enjoying this enthusiasm I have going on.